Often it's important to take these big numbers and translate them to individual stories. And I'd like to share with you today a story, a story about Tim Collette and his son in my state of Oregon. We received this article from the Economic Fairness Oregon, and it's titled, A Homecoming with No Home. And I'll just read the, the first paragraph here. Mr. Collette says, My biggest problem now is my son comes home from the military in August, and my home is being foreclosed on in 18 days. He's been hit by an IED, people shooting at him, and he just wanted to come home and sleep in his room, in his bed, and be safe for 15 days. And I told him I'd make that happen. I don't know how yet, but I will. Mr. Collette shared his story with Oregon lawmakers at a recent hearing on foreclosure reform, and I thank him for sharing his story. And for Tim and countless others, it didn't need to be this bad. We have a program here in America called the Mortgage Modification Program, or HAMP Program, Housing Affordable Modification Pro Program. That program hasn't worked very well. Indeed, it's a voluntary program. And it has been more or less a nightmare for the families that have been applying. Often, a servicer will encourage families to apply because they make more money when a family is behind on their payments than when they're current on their payments. So often, the servicer will say, you know, you probably qualify. What you need to do is stop making your payments for a period of three months or maybe it's six months. Or what you need to do is cut your payments in half and that'll show financial distress and you'll qualify for this program. And so the family follows those directions, understands that they're in the process of getting a modification and then it turns out the servicer has a different story to tell. Often saying that you know what? Your credit score isn't very good because you've only been making half payments for six months. So you know what? You don't qualify after all. And you owe us a lot of money. And if you don't pay us, we're foreclosing. That's the nightmare of a program that was supposed to help families that has often hurt families. Mr. Collette's story is one of these stories of going through the difficulty of this program. He bought his home in 2006. At the time, it seemed like a great investment for him and his son, especially considering that he was in a position to put down more than $100,000 as a down payment. That's a situation that very few families can emulate. And he was able to afford his uh, mortgage payments quite easily within his income. But when Wall Street's bad bets sparked the national recession, everything changed. He lives in one of the hardest hit areas of the state of Oregon, Deschutes County, and the construction industry dried up overnight, and therefore his business, his construction business, dried up overnight. He called his mortgage servicer to begin the mortgage modification process. And he did what the bank asked of him. At the time, the bank extracted partial payments, actually for years, on the false hope that Tim could receive a long-term fix. And so month after month, his equity, that original $100,000 payment, down payment, it was siphoned away. It was siphoned away through bank fees. It was siphoned away through declining property values until there was nothing less. Had his request for a modification been processed promptly, either he would have been approved or denied. If he'd been approved, that would have been great and would have locked in his, his payments and he could have proceeded with that fine financial foundation. If he'd been denied, he would have had the ability to say, I've got to make a decision then. 
Do I put this home up for a short sale? Do I put it on the market and try to sell it for what's owed to the bank? He would have had some savings left over to pick up and start over. Well, Tim did all that was right, and he played by the rules, but he's in a precarious position today. And in just nine weeks, his son overseas, serving our country, will come home. And let's hope it's a homecoming with a home, not a homecoming without a home. Now, this amendment does three important things. And the first is that it establishes a single point of contact so that when a family talks to their servicer, they don't have to start from scratch every single time in explaining their story. And with that single point of contact, there will be somebody who has a coherent file. Because so often, each time a family talked to a different person at the servicer, that person had lost the file or lost key papers in the file or was sent additional information that had been requested but didn't put it into the file. And so a single coherent point of contact. The second thing that this amendment does is it ends the dual track in which a servicer proceeds to pursue foreclosure at the same time they're talking to the customer about a modification. Very simply, they set aside under this amendment, would set aside that dual track, that foreclosure track, until they make a decision. They can make it over a longer period of time, over a shorter period of time, but until they make the decision and tell the customer, they set aside the foreclosure track. That would reduce a lot of the stress, a lot of the confusion, a lot of the enormous frustration that families face. The third point in this amendment is that it requires a third party review before a servicer sends a home into foreclosure. That simply guarantees that the law has been followed, that there was a coherent examination of the paperwork and a foreclosure isn't ordered at the same time a modification has been approved or foreclosure isn't ordered at the same time a modification is upon the verge of being approved, or that a foreclosure doesn't proceed because a document is missing from the file. Now, Connecticut and Maine have such a program, and it has kept 60% of the families that would otherwise be out of their house in their house. So three basic fundamental reforms.